Hello Galaxy, I'm Chris Perillo, and I've been talking an awful lot about the iPhone, specifically the iPhone X and iOS. But, of course, I've talked about a great many things. I've done thousands upon thousands of videos and sent hundreds of thousands of tweets and posts and blogs and all that stuff. Uh, so, I, I'm, I'm pretty much interested in, in covering this topic now. Eventually, don't worry, I will get off the topic of iPhone and get back to talking about Star Wars. I know, we all miss it. I will get there, eventually, again. Uh, but in the coming days, if not weeks, this is going to be uh, the topic. So, uh, in another couple of days, I'll be receiving the iPhone 8 Plus that I ordered. I'll be doing an unboxing, initial impressions, some comparisons, uh, and, and giving you my f you know, feedback on what it is that I'm experiencing every step of the way. Uh, but before I go too much further, I wanted to share with you a few perspectives that I'm, I'm finding to be quite revealing, uh, you know, supportive, and uh, uh, also... Um, uh, contradictory to my perspective. So it's not just about finding opinions that validate mine. It's, it's one of the reasons why I love social media, because it gives me a chance to explore what other people are saying and, and, and why they're saying it and, and hearing motivations and reasons. It expands my understanding of a particular topic. Uh, but, you know, of course, the more I understand the topic, the more difficult it is to be able to accommodate uh, something that sounds like it's coming completely out of left field or is completely unintuitive to or counter to my experience, specifically uh, when I've you know, been dealing with this kind of stuff for as long as I have. So uh, the first one that I wanted to pull up, uh, I just he, he came on my radar. Was, I, I can't remember how. I think it was he, he was replying. We were on a reply thread or something. Uh, Bob Burrow. And Bob uh, apparently worked at Apple at one point, potentially on, and I don't know too much about Bob, honestly. Uh, this is, uh, here we go. That's that's Bob, um, and he says when I first started talking about the broader systemic problems at Apple, the first thing I pointed out was now this is this is something a perspective that's not necessarily a, 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 from an outside uh, experience. It's from a, more of an inside experience. Uh, I do not believe he's at Apple any longer, but this is what he's he's put out to the public, and I think it, it deserves a, a great degree of attention that I I don't know if it's getting. So I'm just, if you don't mind, I'm just going to to, to read it. Uh, and this is, the first thing he pointed out was, when he first started talking about the broader systemic problems at Apple, how Tim Cook had ousted Scott Forstall and reorganized the executive staff to establish peace and improve collaboration. Now, he, he points to a long thread where he was basically saying, he's, he's done these uh, tweet storms before, uh, Tim Cook fired Scott Forstall and aligned the executive staff so as to have peace, which is to say there's no conflict. Uh, Bob then goes on and quote tweets Eli Schiff, uh, and, and Eli Shift, in his tweet, is effectively uh, 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 doing a screenshot of what John Gruber over on Daring Fireball had posted in relation to the iPhone X. Uh, this is this is really what caught my attention. I almost kind of have to show you. you just, I just love this. Uh, Bob says, It's becoming more apparent with every product release that something is wrong. So don't worry. I, I'll post the links in, in the description, so you should potentially follow Bob if you're interested in this topic, uh, or, or, or his background, certainly, because I did. Um, he says, the problem was Tim mistook passion, passion that I don't seem to be in short supply uh, of, or for, I don't have, I have a lot of passion. Uh, Tim mistook passion for arbitrary conflict, ego, grandstanding, and general assholishness, which I totally get because I've been labeled all the, all of those things for a great many reasons, but I just see myself as passionate. I get interested and I dive deep. Um... What Tim doesn't understand, and Bob's quoting himself in the earlier storm, uh, what Tim doesn't understand is you have to fight for your products. That's what we all had done up until then. Up to then, that's what they had to do. You have to fight for your products. So I don't want to hear the sit down and shut up mentality when I'm sitting there and pointing out these niggling issues. Like it's, it's just, it's, not, it's counterintuitive, not just to my ethos, but specifically to the way Apple used to be run. Like if you don't, if you don't talk about them, and there is no conflict, and everybody everybody gets along, things don't get better. Even if you perceive them to be okay, even if you're copacetic with how things are happening, you've you've got to listen to 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 the the, the people who are throwing up flags. There are canaries in the coal mine. Don't confuse what I'm saying and how I'm saying it with 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 the message. Don't please please don't throw out the message. 
Don't get tripped up in how I'm delivering it. Find someone else who delivers information in the way that, that you want it to have delivered. Someone, and this is the highest compliment I've been paid all year, said I've, I'm like the male version of Rachel Maddow. I consider that a compliment because I think her style is amazing. In fact, if I had a style to emulate, it would be hers. Hers. Bleh. Bob continues. Which, if he was correct, then his decision is unassailable. However, if he is wrong, his, he undermined passion for products. The very thing that we are seeing in Apple's current lineup. We're not just talking about hardware. We're talking about hardware and software. Everything. Stem to stern. Apple. He's, he's referring to Tim there. I still maintain, this is Bob, that this is exactly what happened, and that's why you're seeing today traditionally fierce Apple loyalists scratch their head. I'm not an apologist. You, you, man, you can go all the way back, man. I, I've i called things out as I see them. I don't care what company it is. I got no allegiances. I just want a, a good user experience. I want something that I believe deserves to be made, that needs to be made, that I need. This is why... It's, it's, it's somewhat vindicating. And I'm not saying it's completely vindicating. And I'm not saying that, look, this just mirrors my opinion. But it only adds credence to everything that I've been throwing out there for, God, ever since iOS 7. You can literally, you can go back and you can watch my iOS 7 video and you can just see the, 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 the expressions of disdain cascade across my face. Tim Cook is well-intentioned, and that I have no doubt. But the road to hell is paved with good intentions. There's a reason sausage making looks as it does. If you try to make sausage making pretty, you're no longer making sausage. Conflict is a side effect of passion, of caring, of fighting what you believe is right in the product you're working on. Steve knew this. It was a part of Apple's DNA. But it has been destroyed, eliminated in favor of peace and collaboration. And the result is compromised design, compromised products, attributable to, in my estimation, deci decisions made by Tim Cook. Finally, my understanding is informed by my history of working at Apple and elsewhere in the Silicon Valley. I've worked on colossal failures and on the most successful products of all time. I've chatted with current and former colleagues who both agree and are skeptical of my assessment. However, I will probably never talk about personal one-on-one -on -one conversations to bolster my position. You're going to have to understand that it's up to you to look at what's going on, read the tea leaves a bit, and make up your own mind. To me, it's obvious that this is vindicating because this is the stuff that I was thinking back when I first saw iOS 7. But I had no, I, 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 no proof. I, you know, I can't prove that, that it was happening. I don't have that experience. Bob does. Bob did. How this is not front page news on every one of the tech websites that you read is beyond me. Why the other tech, uh, the, the vloggers, the people who do tech videos all the time aren't talking about this is beyond me. If they're going to talk about the iPhone 10, they deserve, Bob's story deserves to be surfaced. Because to understand the iPhone 10 and where we are today with Apple, you have to understand this story, his perspective. Because it's just as valid. It's... I'm not just looking to reinforce my opinion. But this is, I mean, I, as soon as I read this, I was just like, whoa, dude, this is so heavy. And suddenly I'm Marty McFly in <laughs> Back to the Future 2. Or Back to the Future, first Back to the Future, sorry. I was thinking about my Back to the Future. Should I go get my Back to the Future cap? I could do that. I'd like to do that. Don't know how long I'm going to wear it, but it felt like the thing to do. It's so cool. Uh, here we go. So I'm going to flip now to what Eli Schiff tweeted. Oh, that looks horrible. Sorry. I mean, it looks awesome, but the light. I suck at video production. I think y'all figured that out by now. Doesn't keep me from talking. I'm a talker. Uh, so this is going to be Eli Schiff, and you need to follow Eli as well. He is a design critic, and as far as I'm concerned, he has the eye for detail that rivals some of, 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 of the, uh, the attention to detail that I would have. So Eli is another must follow on Twitter, especially if you find yourself frustrated by what Apple's doing. Uh, you know, and, and he's a critic. I, I like following critics. I like, I like hearing what they have to say. And he says, comes out, this is what Bob had quote tweeted. Gruber just comes out and says it. And, and this is, this is an, again, you, this, is, this is just part of what you've got to read. Daring Fireball is another one that you have to read. Whether or not you agree with John, he is, he is a straight shooter. I don't always agree with John, but he, there are very few others who, whom I respect. 
Like, I, I just, I, he's got a lot, a lot of gravitas. Uh, so to quote John, uh, being quoted by Eli, when using an iPhone 10, again, based on a severely limited amount of time, the notch seems less noticeable than when looking at promotional photos of it. But that's in portrait orientation. In landscape, that notch looks like a joke. I think Johnny Ive either lost a bet or lost his mind. It looks silly. And to pretend otherwise is nonsense. Now, he says he's okay with it because he never uses his phone in landscape mode. But that, to me, is not the point. The point is not whether or not you can minimize a design error. The, des the, the point is that it exists in the first place. People didn't have to deal with these problems in the old Apple, the Apple of yesteryear. The Apple that people just seem to forget when they talk about the latest iPhone. They, 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 it's, it's like they're feeling nostalgic instead of sentimental. You know, they, they've romanticized the past, seemingly. And I know I get accused of doing that all the time. I know what it was for me, and I know what it was for others. But Gruber, that, I wouldn't even say that's the most damning thing he said in, in his write-up on Daring Fireball. It, it, trust me, if you want someone with a different tone, timber, approach, we wouldn't necessarily always say the, the right things, but John is it. John is a far more uh, different style of presentation, let's say. But hey, I'm Italian. I'm not going to say that's the only reason why, but it's just I just don't, I only know how to be me. I can't be someone else. Um, so here's another uh, another random tweet beyond the threads. These are coming. I just love. I love the fact that we're coming together. Not that we're going to form a group or a club. We probably should. A cabal. No, uh, an organization and, and fight for user experience and bring back Apple. We'll hold up signs. And, um, this, but what's interesting is all this is kind of bubbling to the surface. Like I've been talking about this so long and have felt so alone in this. And we, we seem to have the perfect storm of elements where people are now seeing the manifestation of all of these decisions coming to a head with what we see in the iPhone 10. Not everybody does, but I'm saying those who do, we're starting to find each other. And, and like, I, I, I just, it excites me so much because I, do, I don't feel so alone. It's like when you find your community, when you find your group, right? It's like, you know, I grew up loving Star Wars, and then when I was able to connect with Star Wars fans online, it was just like, phew, huge. I loved it. So um, this is uh, Ivan, and I'm not going to uh, I'm not gonna try to pronounce his last name. And I'll, I'll link all these tweets in the video description if I didn't mention that. Today, my brother, an architect, who I assume no style, said, it's Volkswagen diesel fiasco, fiasco all over again. It's about management and sales, not talent. I'm not the only person to say this. This came after a quote tweet uh, from Derock 401 Well said, Chris Perlow. It's not the idea. It's the implementation. Uh, won't be buying the iPhone 10 either. And it's not that we don't want to. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, we do. That's the he even hashtagged floating turd. Like, I, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for these hashtags, people. Um, it, it's, uh, it, this isn't about ego. I, I, and this is where I, I want to say the fact that I'm seeing more followers with a variety of backgrounds and experiences and expertise, again, coalescing around this concept of what's this, 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 uh, ex shared experience that we're having this, you know, re being re repulsed. We, re we revile that which has been laid, uh, you know, at our doorstep as an option in the iPhone 10. And we've been feeling this way about iOS for years. It's, it's not just me. I'm not just some crackpot who wears awesome hats. Some would debate that. That's a different story. That's a different video. So on the, on the front, another challenge I get on a, re, uh, on a frequent basis, and, you know, I, I expect to do more engagement on Twitter, so I can't do everything in a video. Uh, on a frequent basis, I get challenged on, well, I don't see any iOS slop. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, I've never had a problem with it. Never been a problem. Okay. You are very lucky because let me tell you what's been indicative of regular experience with iOS 7. Just let me just, let me just show you one thing. One thing. This is from a techie. This is from uh, someone who works with tech inside and out, not a neophyte by any stretch of the imagination, Adam Matthews. Uh, he says, iOS 11 is literally riddled with tiny, annoying bugs. Worst major update I've used in terms of bugs. All, and the podcast apps is so horrid now. They're all horrid. All the default apps have problems, whether it's layout issues, like misaligned elements, padding uh, issues, spacing, uh, the design elements that are incongruous. You know, they still haven't gotten rid of skeuomorphism. For some, in, some inexplicable reason, Notes app still has it, the, the, the texture pattern. For some inexplicable reason, uh, Reminders had it in the first place. Like, it's... 
So let me go ahead and show you the screenshot. This is what Adam posted. This is this is again indicative. Look at this. Look at this. This is look, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I've been looking at this kind of thing since iOS seven. Rotation. This is this is just one issue. It's death by a thousand cuts. I cannot possibly document everything because I tried. At last year, you might remember, I actually penned a Google Doc in the hopes that I could get it in front of someone at Apple who could actually like pay attention to what's going on. But instead of fixing this slop, what we got is animated poop emoji. That's what they spent their resources on. Instead of just taking a break and fixing what's broken, this one example out of literally thousands you know, even if I didn't file a radar on it, I, God bless it, guarantee someone else has. That This is an egregious example. So don't sit there and tell me, and I'm not saying you are, but I don't want to hear the art. I'm done with people saying a few things. One, I'm tired of people saying they'll fix it because they don't, and I'm tired of people not, uh, not understanding that this is a problem, even if they've never seen this themselves. And it's possible. There are other issues that they don't see that still exist. I'm getting worked up because it's gotten so out of control. Someone would say I'm out of control. But I'm just tired of being told this, this isn't a problem, that this is irrelevant, that it'll be fine, that most users don't care. That's not the Apple I knew. That's another company. So on that front, I'm actually going to jump ahead. I'm, I'm going to show you, this is, I think this is bad advice. This is horrific advice. I, I like Andy. I, Andy Anako, uh, I've known him for a number of years, as have many in the Apple community. He knows what he's talking about. He's genuine, straight shooter, good guy. But he tweets, here's why I'm totally not bothered by the iPhone 10 notch. Apple can easily refine its, refine its appearance with a future iOS up update or system setting. So what have I said what have I been saying for a number of years? Don't buy a device based on what it could be. Buy it for what it is today. There's no guarantee Apple's going to fix it, and I'll give you one reason why. I have a feeling Apple knows. They don't perceive it as an issue, one, because if they did, they wouldn't have launched that way. And two, I think what would keep Apple from ad addressing this in software, and I challenge anybody to, to, to I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess I would... How can I say this effectively? I'm I'm trying I'm I'm challenging everybody to prove a negative, and I know it's not fair, but I believe Apple will not fix this problem because it's, they don't see it as a problem, and because of their pride, I think pride will keep them from addressing it in software. But if you want a third reason, look at the rest of the iOS slop, because it's there, it's everywhere. I get people still tweet it to me to this day. I don't do a lot of retweeting anymore, but right now I am because it's like. This is the hot issue right now for me because a lot of people are going to be making a decision about the iPhone 10. And if you get some a journalist with background saying something that irresponsible and I believe it's irresponsible to suggest that it's a possibility based on everything that we've seen in iOS, all the bugs don't get fixed. And if they don't perceive it as an issue and people buy it anyway and are fine with it, they're not going to fix it. So to say that it's just irresponsible. It's, it's bad advice. It's really bad advice. That's bad advice. It lacks perspective in terms of how Apple has addressed problems in the past and how they haven't. So that's, okay, so that, that's that one. Okay, I got a few. So if you think that, you know, it was just a, you know, a one, uh, you know, a one-off, uh, there's actually, Adam had a reply in, you know, think, oh, it's just the iPhone and I don't, landscape mode. There's the iPad. Oh, and someone replied to his thread. Check that out. This is all over the place. This is just one example. I, I, I you know, if I, I, if I had the time and, and, and the inkling, you know, I would screenshot every problem that, that, that I saw and document it if I felt that it was actually going to get fixed. Um, the mail app in iOS 11 is riddled with layout issues. Like, just uh, sometimes text gets smushed up, the, the, the subject gets smushed up next to the, 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 the button uh, to go back, uh, you know, the subject line. Uh, the, 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 the spacing of, of elements is incongruous uh, on the sides. Uh, they can't figure out what they're doing with their horizontal rules in one app or another. Like, there's just, it's just incongruity after incongruity after incongruity. Like, someone just slapped on an element and said, done. That, to me, is everything the iPhone 10 looks like. That is everything iOS is. 
That sh it, it shouldn't be. This is not a hard problem to solve. If you have the right people in place. So, if you want to hear about developers, there are a lot of developers. Everyone's got different opinions. I mean, no doubt. Like, there's no cookie cutter. Like, everyone's got to, you know, agree with me on this. That's, that's not the case. There are people who are going to disagree. But Marco Arment, um, you know, he's an app developer. Uh, is written apps that you probably use, especially if you, uh, you listen to podcasts. I generally don't listen to podcasts all that much. But Marco knows what he's talking about. He says, the, uh, the 10's biggest UI design problem for me isn't the notch. It's the home indicator and the rounded screen corners. Now, he's not talking about that from an aesthetic point of view. I believe it's a problem because of an aesthetic. But he says, iPhone UIs basically can't use the four corners anymore. That's not a small deal. We're going to have to add a lot of margins everywhere. So the idea that uh, you'd have to effectively you know, write one app to run on every everything is gone. You know, Apple, or Apple, Apple fans have now lost any... Um, any weight behind the argument that Android is a fragmented ecosystem because Apple's done the same thing just differently. So he says, will be challenging to have the same UI scale between the iPhone SE, 678, plus, and 10. SE owners will get the worst UIs forced upon them. And we're not even talking about the scaling of elements, right? I mean, because that's a completely different uh, uh, situation on the iPhone 10 screen. Um, and that's, that's what I wanted to point out. So iPhone 10, 458 PPI at 3x, about uh, 153 points per inch. Uh, iPhone 678, 326 PPI at 2x. So this is the reason why some buttons are going to be larger on the 10, like on the Plus, on a smaller screen. So elements like keyboard or, or the icons. I couldn't figure out why uh, the, the icons, the status icons in the upper uh, right corner of, upper right corner of the, in the ear that flanks, it's got the Wi-Fi and the, the battery. They were so large. I'm like, why did they not at least shrink them to accommodate ba in a balanced way? Like, that was the second thing that threw me off when I first saw the screen sh uh, during the keynote presentation. You can go back and watch it if you want. Um, but the, the ele some of the elements were larger than they needed to be. Some people don't mind that. I would. I think it's not right. I don't think it looks good. And you can't change it. That's like how the screen will work. That's, that's how those elements will be rendered. Things will be bigger than they need, than, in my estimation, than they need to be. So, that's that. Uh, but wait, there's more. I saved the best. And you guys aren't going to believe this. All you gals either. None of y'all. So, I don't know how this happened. So, one, one person who just recently started following me on Twitter because we're, we're kind of getting... <laughs> we're coming together. Uh, he, I, he, said, he, re, he replied and he, to me and he, he included a, a, a tweet from earlier in another thread. And I scrolled up the thread. I was like, okay, what I'm reading. This is like midnight, one in the morning. Yeah, I couldn't sleep. Um, so I'm reading the thread. I go to the top. You, so, <laughs> I laughed so hard, I woke up Diana. I laughed so hard when, when I saw what the, the thread inception was because he had no idea. Whoever tweeted it at me had no idea. Steven Sanofsky comments on the uh, rant on the iPhone 10. What is best about this? The rant replies to the rant. Even I made it in there. So the the link is is what I read to y'all the other day. It's the the original Mac forums or Mac rumor forums. I think I said that wrong the first time too. A thread where people just hate the sound of my voice. Although forty one people happen to agree with me. That's that's something. Everyone else doesn't have a counter argument apart from I suck. But I have nothing to do with this. I, I have nothing to do with this mess. So, why is this funny? Why is this... <laughs> Irony is dead. Irony is dead. You thought it was dead when they when they honored Steve Jobs in the Steve Jobs Theater before revealing the iPhone X and having done all the work and, and, and not followed through and with fit and finish on iOS for all those years? You, you thought Irony was dead then? Irony is dead. I, I replied to him. I, I got no problem with the, I got no problem with Stephen. I, I really don't. Stephen, if you're not familiar, <laughs> was the man responsible uh, for Windows 8. I even favored it. I even favored it. I did. Like I, I, I look, did you see it? I, I like I have a heart. I favored the tweet. So Stephen was the man in charge of Windows 8 at Microsoft. So why is that interesting? Let's let's just follow this all the way through for people who are not aware. <laughs> Because I, now somewhat famously, and I say that loosely because I'm not anywhere near famous, uh, had, had uh, uh, 
done a video with my dad sitting in this very chair with a camera uh, right off here, on, with a computer right here, using Windows 8 for the first time, the Consumer Preview Edition. And I did it live on the internet when we were doing live streams. And he sat here and he clicked over onto the, the start screen uh, and couldn't find his way back. And I knew, but I knew that was going to happen. I set my dad up for failure. I knew it was going to happen. And he's like, well, what do I do? Do I click the fish? I said, I don't know. Did I give it a click the fish? No. He couldn't figure out how to get back. Why? Because Windows 8 had horrific UX problems. That was the point I was trying to make. That was the only point I was trying to make. He eventually figured it out, but that, that wasn't the point. So he, he sat there, you know, befuddled. And eventually his last line, when I clipped it down, he said, they trying to get me to switch to Mac? Or they're trying to get me to switch to Apple? My dad, to this day, is recognized in both Apple stores and Microsoft stores for that video that I used to illustrate a point to Microsoft, knowing nobody on the inside. That video, from what I've learned, made it all the way up to Steven Sanofsky, who said, nah, we're just going to keep moving ahead. Users will figure it out. That, that, that did what? Well, what happened with Windows 8? What happened with my prognostications with Windows 8? What happened with Windows 8? Did they, did they just keep pushing forward? What were the users' reactions to Windows 8? How, how, did that, how did that work out for Microsoft, that whole UX problem? I'm not talking about the UI. I never really had a problem with the, uh, the, the general uh, the ethos, the design ethos of, of Windows 8. It was the UX I had a problem with. So he goes, he goes, he even, look, you've got to see this thread. I'm just like, he, cause at this point, I don't think he made the connection that that was me. It was me who surfaced the problem to Microsoft that I've been told in subsequent years, many people inside of Microsoft agreed with my position. And many people left Microsoft because they knew that Windows 8 was going to be a problem for this specific, this is just one of the reasons. He did, he did. <laughs> so here he is, basically saying, look at this Jack and Innie, complaining about UX. So I'm going to take UX advice from Steven Sanofsky? After having tried to explain to him what UX was back when, well before Windows 8 had a chance to ship? Trying to save him? Trying to save you? I, I'm, I'm going to listen to this criticism? I'm, I'm going to... It's me who's got the problem? Ranting? It's me? Not possibly the product or the people in charge of the product? He says, yes. And so Someone else jumps in. Yes, reminds me of many things complained about that take up space, like status bars, closed buttons, as if full screen is a thing. Continues. Actually, you know, they're redundant. The purpose uh, to deal with today's realities... If phones, uh, and he says, uh, he keeps, he, this is, this was the telling thing. This is, this is, so he was replying to other people. He says, apparently change is difficult. So I want to address that point, Stephen. And I know you're not going to watch this video. Hell, I doubt that half the people out there have watched this far. I still got to talk about it. Apparently change is difficult. No, no, no. Change isn't difficult. I, I like change, believe it or not. But change for the sake of change is problematic and that to me is the iphone 10 it's well it's the 10 year anniversary and we got to do something we have to, we can't call it a 7s we got to call it the 8 because the people don't want a 7s they want they want an 8 but then we also got to do something special because it's the 10 year anniversary we need to change something we need to make it look like we're a new bold company we need to do these things we need to integrate our technologies in this way shape or form and I, mind you i would not have an issue with the iphone 10 if usability was at the center. Hell, I was barely hanging on with, with it, my UI issues and user experience issues with iOS in general. But the iPhone 10 was just an egregious example of over, uh, like, just failed oversight. Apparently, change is difficult. That's his response. That's Steven Sanofsky, the man who brought you Windows 8, uh, telling you that what you believe as a user, what you feel as a user is irrelevant. That, that's, that's how I read it. Apparently change is difficult. That's what it comes down to, that I'm unwilling to change or that you're unwilling to change. Change comes gradually. That's why I have a problem with anybody who says that Apple's not innovative enough. But, but change comes incrementally. But change for the sake of change is asinine. And especially when you are, you are, you are producing something that is counter to the very values that drove people to your company in the first place. God, why do, I, why do I have to? This is where I get angry. Why do I have to explain it? Some random twerp 
Because that's how I feel I am. I feel like I'm just like, I know I'm a pissy. I get it. It's not self, just self-deprecating. I'm not important. Why am I doing this? I'm not getting, I don't work there. If I had a, honestly, if I had a shot to work at Google or Microsoft or Apple or Facebook or any of the big companies to influence the, the, the direction of how usability happens, I'd absolutely snap that up. That happens all the time here in Seattle. Like, oh, absolutely. I'm in. No one's asked. Doesn't surprise me. They're probably afraid of conflict. I got no problem bringing it. I got no problem speaking my mind. Apparently change is difficult. That's his, to me, that's his response to the, the fiasco known as Windows 8, which some people didn't think was a fiasco. I think it was a fiasco. That's his response. That's his response. Change is difficult. I replied, I said, uh, change for the sake of change is unwarranted. It's not the idea, it's the execution. Nail the landing. Stick the landing. iOS hasn't done that since 7. So, it's just, it was just funny. That just, I laughed so hard. He didn't, he wasn't subtweeting me. He, did, he probably doesn't, he, he, I'd be shocked if you remembered. Although I tweeted him, like, hey, I don't know if you remember me. Here's the video. I <laughs> mean. Steven Sadovsky talking about UX. Irony is dead. Like I just I've done I've done a lot of wrong things in, in 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 my life. Lord knows, probably more wrong things than right things. But man, people don't want to listen to me for whatever reason. Okay, fine. I'm 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 not. It doesn't mean I'm not going to talk about it. Just because we disagree doesn't mean I'm not going to talk about it. You know, just because I'm going on and on about it doesn't mean that it's it's inane and it's not a conversation worth having. Having that's how we got to this point, point. and that people just accept it is, is is more maddening. That they can't see it is more maddening to me. Could I have a different approach? Sure, but that's not me. So those are some tweets that I want you to look at. Those are some things I want you to read. Those are some things I want you to understand. I've got more videos up my sleeve. Uh, well, not it lives figuratively. That's not obviously that's not how they fall out. Uh, I wish they did. But uh, more iPhone stuff in the near future, iOS stuff in the future. Um, but you're always just going to get the straight shot from me, whether it's Apple, whether it's Microsoft, Samsung, HTC, I don't LG. I don't care what the company is. Like I'm just going to tell you. This is what I, even if, even if they, they, they give me something to, to look at, I'm just, look, this is how I feel. I mean, I, I gotta be honest. All I, that's all I got. You know, it's, it's all I got is, is, is what I'm able to go to bed with here and hopefully not wake up my wife again tonight by seeing a funny tweet. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you everybody for uh, watching today. I don't know if I can keep up with the pace of these daily long videos, uh, but right now I just got a lot that I've got to get out. Uh, I love you. I appreciate you. And may the force be with you.